everyone. Happy Tuesday. Today is such a fantastic day. It is our webcast day. So at 2 p.m. Eastern time, we will head on over to sewingonline.sulky.com and I will present our Scissor Stasher webcast. So if you are joining me here today on So What and you will be joining us at 2 p.m. Eastern time, Give me a thumbs up. Let me know in the chat that you are going to join us for Scissor Stasher. Here's some more information. So it's happening today at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Again, if you are on a different time zone, be sure to take that into account so that you don't miss a minute of the live event. And if you can't join us live, but you are interested in the content and you wanna see this uh, cute project come together, along with lots more techniques and tips and tricks, be sure to register for the event anyways, because after the live event ends, you can access this webcast at any time on your account at sewingonline.selkie.com. So once the live event ends, I upload it as a on-demand video right on the event page, and you can watch it, pause, fast forward, rewind, all of those good things. If you order a kit today and you don't have it in time for the webcast, that's perfectly fine because it's not meant to be a true sew along in the sense that we are making it together during our 60 minutes of the webcast. It is meant to show you all the how to's and again, tips and tricks, ways to personalize this. Um, I will also be going over how to add a different design to your scissor stasher. So you can create one as shown um, using your items in your kit. And then you can also make multiples showcasing monograms, patch designs in the hoop applique, all sorts of fun stuff that I'm gonna show you this afternoon. All right, so lots of people giving me the thumbs up, saying that they are going to join later this afternoon. And super exciting. As you know, if you watch So What weekly with me here on Tuesdays, we have a fun giveaway for one lucky viewer who is watching, commenting, sharing, all of those good things, letting me know that you're here. Today's giveaway is a scissor stasher kit. I know, an entire kit. I will be giving this away to one person. Again, all you have to do is like, share, comment, give me those great emojis. I'll even take the, you know, frowning, crying emojis. You know, sometimes that's how we're feeling and that's okay. Anyways, all you have to do is engage with the post somehow and you are automatically eligible to win a scissor stasher kit. Now, if you've already purchased a kit, because I've been talking about this for a couple of weeks now, you can get an extra kit to share with a friend or to make, again, multiples of your scissor stasher. Now this kit is on sale right now for only $19.99. The scissor stasher design, the in the hoop design, comes with purchase of the kit, or you can also buy it separately. Now I will say the design is $9.99. So for another 10 bucks, you're getting a full kit. It includes a pack of Microtex needles, it includes two spools of Sulky Poly Deco thread. It includes the fabric, the ribbon, the batting, the stabilizer, everything you need to create a scissor stasher. And then some, really, because you will get enough stabilizer to make multiples. You will get enough needles to make multiples. And that thread will last you through quite a few scissor stashers. All right, so that's our giveaway today. And I also need to mention this kit is only on sale until midnight tonight. So the day of the webcast, which is today, we have lots of things on sale. And those sales are only good until midnight tonight. So you must get your kit uh, today before the price goes up to about 28 bucks. All right, let's see. We have some other things, again, on sale as well. And I will be talking you through a new project we have at sulky.com, which is our green thumb, oops, it's back upside down, our green thumb garden flag. I'm gonna show you how this comes together. You'll learn a really cute 
um, little flower quilted block and we will be talking about the machine embroidery. We will be talking about quilting options. Um, it's a little hard to see that beautiful design, but there it is. Um, it actually has some great contrast and is <laughs> very easily seen, um, but the pictures don't do it justice. So we're going to talk about this project and a lot of the things I used in the creation of this are on sale for our webcast day. So you'll be able to get some great deals here during So What as well as during the webcast. So if you want to take notes and then join me over at sewingonline.sulky.com and grab up the items I'm talking about for this as well as the other items featured in our Scissor Stasher webcast, you may do so at any time while we're talking right now or during the webcast a little bit later. Also, just by registering for our Scissor Stasher webcast, you will get our Sewing Men's the Soul patch design completely for free as a thank you for registering. So again, be sure to register even if you can't join us live because then you will be able to access the content and the entire video at any time from your own personal library over at sewingonline.sulky.com. Now, I do want to mention those; these are two different sites. Um, you will be purchasing your kit from sulky.com. You will be watching our webcast at sewingonline.sulky.com. And I know this is confusing for many people, um, but we have two different websites. One houses all of our special events, webcasts, video casts, our education content. The other site, sulky.com, is where you purchase your threads, stabilizers, all of those good things. And you do need two separate usernames and passwords, one for sulky.com, one for sewingonline.sulky.com. You can actually use the exact same credentials for both sites if you want to keep it easy and be able to remember how to log into those platforms that might be easiest for you. Okay, I have some other things to go over. Lots of people coming on and saying good morning. Good morning from San Diego. Hello. Good morning. Good to see you. Sharon's got her scissor kit and she is ready to go. That is fantastic. I love that you guys are making friends in the chat. I recognize lots of your names. Um, so it's really cool that we all come together on these Tuesdays. Okay, some other things we need to talk about. Our Casey Duffel photo contest. We've got lots of entries now over on the Casey Duffel photo contest. We will be putting the uh, URL in our chat here because I think I forgot to put it in the description of today's post. But you can upload your picture of your finished Casey Duffel from our Casey Duffel video cast that we did back in February. And once you do that, you will be eligible to win over. $1,900 worth of sewing supplies to outfit the sewing room of your dreams. I know. You could win a brother sewing machine. It's a fantastic sewing machine that comes with an extension table. It's a real workhorse. You guys will absolutely love it. You will win a Havel's cutting bundle. You will win a court club membership from Sally Tomato. And the Casey Duffel is a Sally Tomato pattern that we featured back in February. We still have Casey kits available. They are in limited supply. And you can still get a kit and whip up your Casey bag in time to enter the contest. You have until June 30th to submit your Casey Duffel photo. And then what you want to do is share out that link so that people will vote for you. There are some fantastic bags up there already. You can go and take a look and vote for your favorite or save your votes. And then when you upload your picture, you can make sure to vote for your own and share it out to family and friends. So this is a really great opportunity to win some really, really fantastic stuff. And of course, you will also win, um, <laughs> I mean, amazing bundles of thread and stabilizer from Sulky. So be sure to enter that. Now, we did this contest in conjunction with the American Sewing Guild. How many of you out there are part of an Ameri the American Sewing Guild? Let me know your chapter in the comments. Um, 
The American Sewing Guild is a wonderful organization I have been a part of for, I think, almost 14 years now. Um, it's a great way to connect with sewers and quilters um, in your community and sometimes a little bit outside your community. I know here in Denver for the American Sewing Guild, it includes, um, I think, Colorado Springs, Denver, and surrounding communities. Um, so it's a big network of Colorado-based sewists. And depending on where you live, you might have a smaller area for your American Sewing Guild um, chapter. And, you know, there's annual conferences. This year, the conference is in San Antonio. And I will be there teaching. And you can actually sign up for conference and attend for free and go in the vendor hall and get some great deals and shop around, um, you know, your favorite brands, companies, influencers will be there. There's, um, I believe, an opening night gala. There are um, certain activities, riverboat crews, all kinds of fun things. You should check it out at ASG.org. Now, Sharon is saying, I belong to the Sacramento chapter... Let's see, anyone else? Indie chapter, awesome. So also if you belong to a guild, whether it is an American sewing guild or a quilting guild or a local sewing guild that you belong to, we have a super unique opportunity. Now, Sulky does hands-on um, guild events where we send an educator to uh, to your guild in your hometown and we will take you through a project and you will learn a lot about stabilizers and threads and different techniques. Um, you know, when the COVID craziness happened, um, we went virtual, of course, like so many people did. Um, and we have now revamped our guild program to offer amazing virtual events. So if you are part of American Sewing Guild, or like I said, another type of guild, these are guild-only events with exclusive content not offered elsewhere. And our first one is happening in October. It's the Strap Happy Tote, plus our All About Thread lecture. And this Strap Happy Tote I designed, and the reason it's called Strap Happy is because it features really cool thread work along the strap. And again, the lighting in here doesn't really do this justice, but this is featuring our poly sparkle thread as well as our 50 weight cotton thread. And it's in the blendables variety, so you get lots of different colors um, across your strap. So you will learn different quilting techniques to do on your strap to create a totally unique tote. This design is a really great size. You could see it's much bigger than my head for toting library books, magazines. I mean, it can be your everyday tote or you can sort of assign it, you know, to when you go to the library or things like this. I go to the library a lot, so that's my frame of reference. At any rate, it has two pockets one on the front, one on the back, perfect for housing your phone, your keys, you know, essentials that you need to access rather quickly. It is fully lined, no exposed seams. It has a nice edge treatment along the top. It's very sturdy. It stands on its own. And we will be creating this for the Lounge and Learn event in October. So if you are part of a guild and you want to learn this project and you think your guild members would enjoy learning about it too, I put a link to learn more and you can forward that link on to your chapter president and hopefully book that for October. We will be doing one large virtual event. It's a four hour event. It is a true sew along where you will watch me with multiple cameras taking you through the project answering your questions live. Um, so it's going to be a really great experience and very affordable for your guild if you are going to do um, a in-person event. You can stream 
the virtual event altogether if you choose, or you can also open it up to your guild members that maybe cannot travel for an in-person event, but they want to experience it as well. You know, I did an event for the Denver chapter of American Sewing Guild um, a few years ago, and there were many people who uh, couldn't lug their machine to the class, um, or they simply, it was just too far for them to travel and attend. And many people in that in-person class mentioned that it would be so great to stream that to these people who, you know, some were homebound, some just had traveling issues. And again, some people just simply did not want to bring their machine um, that far to travel with it. So there are many, you know, circumstances, health reasons, um, just logistical, you know, things that prevent you from going in person. So I highly suggest um, if you're interested in this project, the lecture, um, having me present to your guild, please, please forward that link on to your chapter president and uh, make it known that this could be something to consider for your 2022 plans. We also have another event in 2023 you can sign up for in March. So there are two options. You can do one or both. And again, it's a really great, um, really, really great opportunity. Um, Denise is saying, love all the virtual events. Heather says, what if you don't belong to a guild? Are you going to do it later? Uh, right now, these specific events on our Lounge and Learn page are specific only for guilds. Um, we wanted to give them an exclusive offering. And so that's the plan right now. Um, but that being said, you know, anything could change. <laughs> All right, Virginia says, I have signed up for the scissor stasher and I have the kit. Let's rock. Love it. I will see you at 2 p.m. Eastern time for that scissor stasher. All right. Eva says, I love Zoom meetings. Not that COVID is decreasing, or now maybe that COVID is decreasing, not as many Zoom opportunities as before. Well, as you know, we have our monthly webcasts and video casts. We have previous events you can access at sewingonline.sulky.com. We have our summer sewing sessions that you can participate in that are longer format on-demand offerings that you can take at your leisure with multiple videos, lots of ancillary materials, um, and you know, really, really great kit offerings for those as well, like our In the Hoop greeting cards. That was super popular. And over on our Facebook group, the Sulky Stitch and Post, Lots of you have been sharing pictures of your finished greeting cards and lots of you made them for Mother's Day. And so I really appreciate you participating over there. That's a really fun space for us to connect and share product projects, um, photos of our in progress projects. Uh, so if you are not a part of the Sulky Stitch and Post Facebook group, just go and search for Sulky Stitch and Post and ask to join. And then we will let you in and you can play with it. Elsa says, sorry, you might have said, when is the conference? ASG conference in San Antonio, Texas. Um, I believe it starts June 30th and it goes until July 3rd. So you can find more information at ASG.org. Um, it's a great time. I haven't gone to conference in a few years, um, obviously for COVID, but a little bit before that as well. And I'm so excited to return again I used to go every year uh, when I was with Sew News and Sew It All, and it, it's just a fantastic group of people and a really great time and lots of classes to be had um, in person, in person. I know, it's exciting. <laughs> All right, Sharon says, I belong to ASG St. Louis chapter. I serve as secretary on the board. I'm attending the conference. Sharon, are you taking my classes? Let me know, Sharon. I'm so excited. You need to come introduce yourself uh, so I can see you. Deborah says, San Antonio is my hometown. It's such a great place to have conference. The hotel where the conference is is right there on the Riverwalk. So what a beautiful, beautiful time of year as well. It'll be hot. It'll be humid. But we're going to be there together. Elsa says, is there a cost for joining? Yes, there's a yearly uh, fee for joining ASG. 
Um, and that gives you a, a access, you know, to the ASG uh, newsletter, which I think comes out uh, maybe monthly. Uh, I'm not an ASG um, uh, employee, so I, I'm probably getting this wrong, but um, it's a it's a nominal yearly fee uh, to be part of your chapter. All right, Sacramento. Very nice, very nice. Okay, let's see. We're going to go, oh, Bucks County ASG. Love it. And Diane, yes, exactly. This is what I hear from a lot of people. You love the virtual option. You live in a rural area far from most of the in-person events. So that's a great opportunity to forward this uh, guild opportunity to your chapter president um, or the person who manages your events for the year and, um, you know, spread the cost out over, uh, you know, your members and it could be a really affordable option for you all to create a project together. Um, so it's a great opportunity. All right. Okay, so like I mentioned, we are going to go through our green thumb garden flag today. Now, I do want to mention, because a few people brought this to my attention, that usually garden flags are made of, let's say, a ripstop vinyl or some kind of material like that that's going to withstand the elements, um, or at least, you know, hopefully withstand the elements. Now, I made this garden flag out of quilting cottons. And the reason I did that is so that obviously you can use it outdoors as a garden flag, or you could hang it on your door um, as a little sign, like a mini quilt. Um, or, you know, you could just hang this anywhere. It has a, um, it has a little sleeve for hanging on your garden flag. But for those of you who maybe don't have a flag stake to hold a flag like this, you can easily convert this into a wall hanging. So, you know, I realize that this is not going to withstand the elements if it were to start raining and hailing. Um, so put it under an awning or you can create your own garden flag using a different fabric. Um, or again, just create this like a wall hanging. So mine says, hello, beautiful spring. And I will say that our free pattern, which is at sulky.com, the green thumb garden flag, that's what you want to search, or I link to it directly in the description of today's post. So you can find, find the free pattern and add it to your cart, check out at $0. And then that pattern will be stored um, under your account at sulky.com. So I will say it is sized for a traditional flag stake. Um, but anyways, it's about, I want to say 11 and three quarter by about 17 and a half ish. So it features cute little pieced blocks, mini piecing. Oh, this is where I was going with it. So the design is not included with the mini quilt pattern. It is meant to showcase the design of your choice. So you can create something like this for the holidays. You could use our um, new Uncle Sam machine embroidery palette and do a patriotic themed um, uh, flag and use different fabrics for these and they could look like little patriotic pinwheels. So there's lots of ways to personalize this. I just chose a spring design and I link to the design as well in the description of today's post. If you're not seeing the entire description, be sure to hit the little see more button and the whole description will pop out. You'll be able to shop directly through the links that I added in the post here today. So hello, beautiful spring. This is an, a design from Scissor Tail St Stitches. Again, link directly in the description of today's post. And it is a rather large design. This took quite a while to stitch out. But I do want to show you up close because the design has kind of a sketchy quality to it. So it's not all fill stitches, which is really great because I'm using quilting cottons for this. This is a Kona cotton, the purple here. The rest of the solids are as well. And if we had had a denser design, 
we would need more layers of stabilizer and quite possibly a different stabilizer to support the density of all of those stitches. But for this, I used Sulky uh, Soft and Sheer Extra. The extra means that it is fusible. If you get Sulky Soft and Sheer, that is not fusible. So the reason I went with a fusible is to also add um, sort of a layer of interfacing to the fabric. It's going to stay with this center piece over time. So when you're hanging this up, it won't sag or droop over time. It's adding structure to the entire project as well as stabilizing the fabric for embroidery. All right, so now that you have kind of the overview, let's dive into the how-tos. All right, first off, load your chosen design into your machine. Again, choose any design you like. We have lots available at sulky.com. We have some really great holiday designs um, from our Santa Sayings machine embroidery collection that would be so cute. We have a design that's called Santa Please Stop Here. That would be adorable to create um, and use your garden hanger, you know, throughout the seasons, throughout the year. So that's a really cute design you could choose as well if you want to choose a different design, something that's not so springy. Maybe a summer design from our Hello Summer machine embroidery collection. Those come in a 9 by 10 hooping size. So that's a really great size to showcase on this particular uh, um, garden flag pattern. So if you don't have a hoop that's that large, you could stitch out a smaller design um, or multiple designs, maybe grid the center um, uh, fabric piece and do four cute designs that kind of coordinate. So that's entirely up to you, again, to personalize it to your hoop parameters that you have. Okay, so in addition to the Soft and Sheer Extra, I also used this best press uh, spray starch for my quilting cotton. And that really just kind of stiffens it up even more to allow you to get a nice, flat, pucker-free machine embroidery. So I did best press on the right side um, and pressed my fabric really nicely. And then I fused my Soft and Sheer Extra to the wrong side of the fabric. So now we've got a really nice stiff fabric uh, to accept our machine embroidery stitches. So now we are just going to get our fabric in the hoop. And again, all the dimensions, the entire supply list, all the instructions are available as a free pattern at sulky.com. So you don't need to take notes. Um, you can just add that pattern to your cart at sulky.com and you'll have everything that you need to create your own garden flag and then personalize it to your liking. So go ahead and hoop your fabric, which now has the stabilizer fuse to it, and it has that nice best press or the spray starch of your choice on the right side. And simply begin the design. Um, this design, I deviated from the color palette that was recommended by the designer and digitizer. So if my design looks a tad different than maybe the design that you create, it's entirely up to you. What I did was I grabbed fabrics that went with my backing. I mean, isn't this adorable? I just found this at Joanne Fabrics and it's a cute little garden motif um, fabric print that I used for the backing. So I just set my backing fabric down next to my sulky slimline container. This is a slimline that includes petites, but I have several of these. I opened up my rayon slimline and I just started pulling threads to match. Then I went to my color chart and I assigned those threads to replace the ones that were featured in the machine embroidery design. And then I kept that near me so that I knew which thread to grab for which portion of the design. And there is the finished stitch out still in the hoop. So 
At this point, we're going to make sure that all of our jump threads are uh, trimmed. I always trim as I go. With each thread change, I trim my jump stitches. And for those of you who frequent So What here, you will know I talk about this notion all the time. This is our curved tip squeezer. This is like my favorite thing in the universe. <laughs> I tell you what, I actually, I made a different scissor stasher that I'm going to go through this afternoon during our live webcast. And thankfully, my little curved tip squeezer fits right on in there. I mean, okay, it, it extends a little bit, but I can wear it around my neck now and I won't be searching for it everywhere while I am sewing, right? Anyway, the reason I'm talking about this is because when you are trimming jump threads, you want to make sure you don't pierce through your fabric while you're cutting all those little jump threads from, des you know, each portion of the design. So what I like about these is see this curved tip. When you trim your threads, the curved tip makes sure that your point is away from your fabric. So it is the best thing making quick and easy work of trimming all of those jump stitches. And there are quite a lot with this design. Again, large design. It took a long time to stitch out. So you want to make sure to trim your jump stitches with each thread change so that they those jump threads don't get in the way of the next uh, thread color. All right. Uh, Leslie is saying, what size design did you use? I, I used the large design, um, and I linked to the size that I used directly. If you go through that link in the description of today's post or the link that is on the pattern itself, it'll take you to that large size that I used. All right. So then we're going to take our fabric out of the hoop and make sure to press it just along that outer um, edge where you can see our hoop ring is really prominent. And the reason it's really prominent is because we added that spray starch. Okay, it's not because we hooped it overly tight. We, we don't want to do that because that can create puckers. So we're going to take that off and give it a little press. I always try to keep my iron away from the stitches as much as possible. Um, I don't know. That's just what I do. You could definitely press it from the wrong side if you want to press over uh, the stitching area or use a press cloth uh, to make sure that your stitches don't get too hot. So here is our finished embroidered rectangle, and then we're just going to square it up according to the pattern. I had my fabric a little bit larger so that I could fit it in my largest hoop, which is a 360 by 260 hoop. Again, huge design. So I had... Um, I think that's the size I used. Maybe I used a 260 by 200. It'll be in the post. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna square it up according to the dimensions in the pattern. And then it's time to cut all of our little squares that we need to create those cute little border pieces on the flag. So like I mentioned, we're doing this, this tiny little piecing. Our little squares are only an inch square. See how tiny these are? And the bigger squares, I think, are maybe two and a quarter inch square. Again, all the dimensions are in the pattern. So you're going to start off with your printed square, which is the petal of your flower. And we're going to place our smaller squares on the inner corner. And you can see my little squares have a little bit of stabilizer still attached because I used the fabric that I cut off to trim up my square. I used that fabric for the center of my flowers. So that's why there's a little bit of soft and sheer extra still attached to those squares. It actually was really helpful because when you're doing these small piecing projects, um, the the fabric can just, you know, get a little unwieldy, I guess. Oh, here's my other samples. So mine has just a little bit of that soft and sheer extra still there. Doesn't hurt a thing, and it actually makes the piecing a little easier. 
Um, you could also spray uh, your piecing fabrics with some more of that spray starch just to make them nice and crisp for, for when you're doing this piecing. So you're gonna place your little center flower square right side facing your printed square. And then you're going to draw from corner to corner so that you now create a stitching line. Stitch along those drawn lines and then you're going to trim away the excess triangle. And this is gonna give you that center part of your flower. There we have it all trimmed. And then you're going to press it. Now it's super handy, and of course mine is not right next to me, to have a wool mat pressing board. How many of you have one of these wool mats? They are so amazing, especially when you're doing little piecing and lots of piecing because you can go right from your machine to your little pressing mat and then back to your machine again. So when we need to do a sew press, sew press, sew press, we don't have to get up every time and go over to our ironing area or ironing board to do our pressing. So if you don't have one of these wool pressing mats, we do have them at sulky.com and you'll see them in my photos coming up here. Um, I absolutely love it because I can put it on my just regular table and the heat doesn't transfer to my table. Um, but it also kind of presses both sides of the block at the same time. So they're just fantastic. All right, so here we have this and we need to press those pieces to the right side. So our seam allowance goes towards the floral fabric. And now we have the beginnings of our flower block. All right, so now you could see me kind of chain piecing all of those pieces at once so I can knock out a bunch of those flowers all together. All right, so now we have our little green pieces. And I just chose green because again, it matched my backing fabric. It turned out to be a little darker than I really wanted for my finished flag, but I still enjoy it. And you know, it goes with the green grass outside. So I chose to use the color I was going to use for the borders so that these flowers kind of really popped. But you can choose a different fabric if you want especially if you're doing maybe some 4th of July type pinwheels. You could choose another print, totally up to you. I just wanted to use the same fabric I was using for the borders so that, again, you can really see my petals pop out. All right, so you'll place your green squares, which are one inch square as well, on your pink fabric. And then we're gonna draw, again, our diagonal lines like so. It's a little bit hard to see in this photo, but you can see it really well in the pattern itself. So you can see um, we're doing diagonals in a, a different sort of pattern from corner to corner. You'll be able to see it better. All right, then stitch along your drawn lines. I used my sulky chalk pencil, which I absolutely love. Um, I have so many of these and this is what I used on the dark fabric. And then on the lighter fabrics, I actually just used a pencil. Um, I was drawing on that soft and sheer extra. And in order for you to see it in the photo, I just used a pencil to draw across those lines. All right, so now you could see it better because I used a contrasting thread um, to sew those little green blocks to my flower petals. And then I trimmed away and then you're going to press them again. And you can use some spray starch to press those nice and flat. And there we have it. And now it's time to piece those together. Now you could create larger floral blocks. This would make a really cute kind of coaster or even a pot holder. And all you have to do is change the dimensions of your blocks and sew them together in the same manner. Oh, so here I am pressing it nice and flat. So now we're going to sew our rows. So two blocks come together on the top, two blocks come together on the bottom, 
and then we're going to sew those together along that center edge. So here is our finished flower block. And I will say I, I kind of experimented as well, um, moving the blocks around, making sure that that purple color was still in the center. Um, you can kind of shift them around if you want different looks. So again, if you're creating a pinwheel or a poinsettia or something like that, um, to be able to make this flag for different occasions and different times of, year, of the year. Um, this one, um, I did one side so that it was um, mirror imaged and then the other side was rotated to give you that um, kind of daisy look. Uh, so totally up to you. You could do them like this and have a totally different look just by rotating your blocks a little bit and playing around with the design. All right, so then you create lots of these. You create six total so that you have three to border the top edge of your flag and three to border that lower edge. And once you have all of those created, you're gonna add your little sashing strips. Here's my wool mat in action, absolutely love it. So I just placed them with the sashing strip strips between and laid them out on my wool pressing mat so that I could grab two and piece them together along those side edges. All right. Once you have your sashing strips, again, you want to make sure to press this nice and flat and you'll press your seams toward the sashing and those seams actually will cover the sashing entirely and it gives you kind of another layer um, of stability for the flag as well. So here are my rows pieced together. And now we're going to add them to the upper and lower edge of the flag with a border strip between. Again, all of these instructions are in the pattern. So you can grab that free pattern at sulky.com and have all the information that you need, all the dimensions, all the yardage requirements and everything. All right. Oops. Let me go back to this real quick. So once you have this created, you're going to add your side borders and then we're going to make our quilt sandwich. So I did not quilt through the backing of my piece. You can see this is just a plain piece of fabric. So cute with the um, gardening motifs. The reason I did this is because I wanted to make this um, let's see, a little bit easier. Um, and I just, I just didn't want to add a binding to it. I wanted the whole thing to look quilted from top to bottom and side to side. So I basically constructed this like you would do a pillowcase. Um, and I'll go over that in just a moment. But if you want to bind yours, you can add your backing fabric then your batting, then your quilt top and quilt through all layers and then bind it as you would traditionally a quilt um, mini quilt. That's totally up to you. But what I did was I used Sulky Soft and Sheer, the non-fusible stabilizer, as sort of my backing fabric, uh, which is going to be another layer of interfacing, this time for the whole garden flag. So I used a layer of soft and sheer, then a layer of batting, then placed my quilt top, then I quilted through all of those layers. That way, when my quilting was complete, I could add my backing fabric right side facing my finished quilted top, stitch around the perimeter, turn it right side out, top stitch, closing my opening with the stitches, and it is complete. And I'll show you how I added my hanging loop as well. So again, two different options for how you want to finish your piece. If you want to quilt through all layers so that your beautiful quilting is also seen on the wrong side, then you will put your backing fabric in as part of that quilt sandwich. If you want to do what I did and finish it like a pillowcase, then you will save your backing fabric and use that soft and sheer as sort of the back of your quilt while you are quilting. And I secured all of these layers using Sulky KK2000, which is our temporary spray adhesive. 
It is another one of my favorite things that Sulky has. I use it for so many things, not just quilt basting. Um, I do. I use it for in the hoop appliques. We're going to use it today in the scissor stasher webcast. It is fantastic stuff. It is air soluble. So over about 24 to 48 hours, it's going to just dissipate in the air. You don't have any sticky residue left behind and it is just quality, quality spray adhesive that you will love. All right, so let the quilting begin. I free motion quilted this by dropping my feed dogs and using my spring loaded embroidery foot and I just did freehand bubbles all across the quilt top. And I got kind of addicted to it. They were so fun and so much easier than I thought it was gonna be. Um, you know, Eric Drexler, who is a sulky educator, he has an entire uh, online course at sodaily.com where he discusses fearless free motion. And he has this entire like rainbow quilt that he has done with these bubbles. And so I wanted to try it out for myself. I used Sulky Invisible Thread in the needle and I used our lightweight 50 weight cotton in the bobbin. You could also use the invisible, nope, I used invisible thread in the bobbin. I'm sorry. I used invisible thread in the bobbin as well. Um, I love quilting with invisible thread because you still get that dimension and as you can see, lots of dimension. I went crazy with the bubbles. They were so fun. I could also stitch right over the top of my beautiful embroidery design, adding bubbles over and around and inside of the motif without compromising the stitching of the design. Now I did avoid like the tulips. I went around those with big circles. I avoided large areas of lettering and went inside of them. So, but there are portions like this entire wheelbarrow. I quilted inside of that. Can you see that? With the invisible stitches. So the whole thing has this great texture and dimension, but the thread just disappears. It's invisible, quite literally. So it allows me to stitch in and around the design all over my pieced little flowers without compromising my fabric motifs, the color of my designs, all of that. So give it a try, Invisible Thread, for your quilting. You will not be disappointed. Sulky Invisible Thread, in my experience, is unlike a lot of monofilament thread out there. You can iron it. You can wash it. Um, it stitches out just like polyester thread. Um, it doesn't stretch and snap like a lot of the uh, uh, monofilaments you might find out there. I do use a 9014 needle with the invisible thread. Um, so for this, I used a 9014 quilting needle. And again, I used it in the bobbin as well. When you do use invisible thread in the bobbin, you really only want to wind about a third or a half of your bobbin. So I had three bobbins that I wound partially for this and I slowed the speed down when I wound those bobbins. And I just had them kind of at the ready for when I ran out of bobbin thread because again, I quilted this a lot. So I started at one of the corners um, and I kind of worked my way down into the work. There are lots of schools of thought about this and a lot of people say work in the middle and go outward. You can certainly do that if it works better for you. Now, I had lots of stabilizers still intact. I had my spray starch going on for me. I had that additional soft and sheer piece um, on the back of my work. So also that KK2000 keeping everything nice and together. So I didn't have a lot of shifting or movement while I was quilting. Um, and I wasn't really sure at the beginning if I was going to stitch um, or add quilting in the design center. So that's kind of why I started at the corner, because I really thought I was going to just outline the design in bubbles and be done with it. But then I just 
got going and went a little crazier with it. So the quilting is totally up to you. You could do echo quilting around your design and just keep going in lines um, to really make your design pop. You could just quilt in the ditch of all of your piecing seams. So that's entirely up to you. But something that's small like this, you know, drop the feed dogs, give free motion a try, give it a chance, and you might just fall in love with it, um, obviously, like I did. So, all right. Here are some of those bubbles in action. The invisible thread is just so, so great. And you could see, I tried to keep them around the design motif at first. And again, I just like started going crazy. So add your quilting however you want to add your quilting. And then when that is complete, you're going to square up your flag um, and, you know, trim off any batting and soft and sheer or backing if you decided to quilt through your backing as well. Um, trim it up so it's nice. And then we are going to start assembling. So this is my backing fabric. I cut it to size to match the um, top of my mini quilt or garden flag. And then I also cut a rectangle for my hanging loop. So here's my hanging loop and you want to double fold the ends of your hanging loop rectangle so that those have no raw edges. So to double fold those, I used a clover hot ruler. How many of you have a clover hot ruler? Um, I thought I had mine right next to me, but it is a kind of a mess right now because of our <laughs> webcast coming up. Um, but at any rate, we have these at sulky.com. They're really thin rulers that you can press over the top of. So when you have a pattern that says double fold a quarter inch to the wrong side, that can be a little cumbersome when you're at your iron. Also, uh, you know, you want to keep your fingers away from those tiny little double folds. So this hot ruler allows you to fold your fabric a half inch, a quarter inch, two inches, over that hot ruler and give it a good press. Then you can do your double fold and make sure you have a nice hem along those side edges of your hanging loop rectangle and they're nice and accurate and crisp and perfect. So a really great notion. If you don't have a hot ruler, you might wanna pick one up. All right, so after hemming those edges, we're gonna fold that hanging, re hanging loop rectangle in half lengthwise, and then place it, center it along the top edge of our garden flag. And this is gonna allow us to attach that hanging loop right there in the seam. So we don't have to hand sew it after the fact. Now I did do a little hand sewing. I'll get to that in just a moment. All right, so then you can baste it in place. Make sure it's not gonna go anywhere. Just baste about eighth of an inch um, from that edge. And now we're going to put our backing fabric on top of our quilt top, sandwiching that hanging loop edge and pinning all around or using those great clover wonder clips. Now we do need to make sure to leave an opening so we can turn this sucker right side out. Um, and of course my photo is upside down and I'm unable to uh, move it for you, but you can see I wrote the word opening. If you can stand on your head, you can read that I wrote the word opening right here. And I also use two clips along either end of my opening because I am notorious for just getting in the zone and sewing the whole perimeter. And then I got a seam rip so that I can get an opening for turning. So I try to give myself these clues so that I don't do that when I need an opening for turning. So I just wanted to show you that, even though it's upside down. So then you're going to sew, leaving that opening, and then turn your garden flag right side out. You can see I have my um, hanging loop extending beyond the upper edge now, and I've clipped my opening shut so that I can tuck those seam allowances into the wrong side and just clip my opening shut. And then you can top stitch the entire perimeter. And now here's where 
I did do a little bit of hand sewing. This is totally optional. You can either have your hanging loop still extending right beyond your flag and you can just put that on your flag post and you're ready to display it. Also, that would give a pop of your cute fabric extending over um, beyond the upper edge. But after seeing that, I kind of wanted to tack it down um, and just make my quilting show from top to bottom without the additional fabric. So I simply folded my hanging loop to the wrong side, clipped it with some wonder clips to make sure the top was nice and flat, and then I just did a little slip stitch with a hand sewing needle to tack um, my hanging loop down on the wrong side. So now we can access it with our little hemmed opening and insert our uh, flag stake, our flagpole, or a dowel if you wanna use, or even a ribbon. You can thread a pretty ribbon through that and hang it on your door or use it as a wall hanging that way as well. So lots of ways to make this your own. Here is my garden flag out in the sunshine. So it makes, um, it's a little hard to read the embroidery in this blast of sunshine, but I really wanted to show this picture to you so that you could see all of those quilted bubbles all over it. I think it looks really cool. And then here is just showing you the back um, of that. And I linked to a garden stake that you can find at Amazon. You can uh, find that in the pattern. Um, I linked to the exact one that I'm showing here. But these can be found a lot of places. Even maybe your local fabric store might have these right now. Um, since everybody is in garden mode, you should be able to get one um, relatively easily if you don't have one. But again, you could also just make this as a pretty wall hanging as well. So here is what the pattern will look like when you grab it from sulky.com, the green thumb garden flag. Again, it's completely free. Oh, and it does have the finished dimensions here. If I can get close and read it. I think it says 11 and a half by 17 and a half. So I was pretty close, pretty darn close. All right, whoops. I'm gonna go ahead and answer some of the questions that have come in the chat. So if you have a question, please go ahead and put it in the live chat box or in the comments if you're watching uh, from Facebook or YouTube, and we will address them now. Again, if you have questions also about our Scissor Stasher free webcast, it's happening in about an hour over at sewingonline.sulky.com. We're going to make this Scissor Stasher together. And I think you will love, love, love making it. It's a great way, you know, in the hoop projects, make such great gifts because you can make them kind of assembly line style and just knock out so many of these. Um, if you have any graduates who might uh, like to sew, this would be perfect for them. Or maybe you store your ID inside and a little bit of cash. Um, who knows? Uh, but again, I'm going to show you also how to personalize this in the hoop design to create lots of these that look different. You could put a monogram on it. You could put a, our patch design on it. So lots of different options for that today. All right. Oh, Cecilia is saying the hot ruler is out of stock. You guys grabbed it up, didn't you? <laughs> well, hopefully we can restock that soon um, because it's a really, really great notion. Okay, Carol says, did you use some type of finish for protection for using the flag outside? I did not. Um, you know, I planned to just bring it inside if there was going to be inclement weather, but I did get some comments from people that said, hey, this isn't really great for an outdoor garden flag uh, because of that reason. So again, you could use it as a wall hanging, put it under an awning. Um, I know there are some spray treatments um, if you've heard of the Nick Wax brand, um, they actually have a waterproofing wash that you can use to wash the garden flag, and that might protect it from the elements a little bit better. Um, so there are different options you can try. Uh, there's also fusible vinyls, but I feel like that would just really compromise all of that beautiful quilting uh, that we spent so long doing. So that might not be the greatest option. Um, 
So to answer your question, I did not use a finish protection or spray. Um, so, all right. Deb, great tip. Deborah says, all my clover clips are red except for one pink one. <laughs> I use the pink one as my stop sewing reminder. Fantastic tip. I love it. Thank you for sharing. All right. Martha got a clover hot ruler for Christmas and love it. It is a great way to hem those really tiny hems or double hems. Again, making sure that you have those crisp edges. So I apologize that it is out of stock. Um, I, I thought we had several on hand, but maybe um, you all gobbled them up already. I apologize for that. Okay, nice backing theme fabric. Thank you, Carol. Again, if you are commenting, adding your questions, giving me those great emojis, somehow engaging with the post today, you are automatically eligible to win our scissor stasher kit, which we will be featuring at two o'clock today, Eastern time. So this is on sale right now for $19.99 grab up your kit, join us for the webcast at 2 p.m. over at sewingonline.sulky.com. I'm so excited to share it with you. I will be your instructor for the free webcast, so be sure to go on and register. Even if you can't join us live at 2 p.m. Eastern time, be sure to register so you can access everything. Get the free patch design just for registering access the video on demand at your leisure once the live event ends so you can watch it tonight if that is more convenient for you. We also have wonderful door prizes to give away during the webcast today so you could be the lucky winner of some really big ticket items and I think you will enjoy hanging out again over at sewingonline.sulky.com. So thank you all for joining me today. I really appreciate spending this time together and I will see you over at sewingonline.sulky.com in about an hour. Sharon is asking, what's the website for the webcast? I linked directly to the registration page um, in the description of today's post. So if you're not seeing that, be sure to click the little see more button. It'll be under featured products and you'll see the link for registering for the webcast. And then once you register, you can hop on over to the event page and join us at 2 p.m. Um, if you have never joined us over at sewingonline.sulky.com, I think you will really enjoy the experience. Um, there's a viewing room for watching the presentation. There is an event page that houses all the links and information that you need for the project. Um, and it's just a great, great experience and a great platform that houses all of the events you've registered for right in your own personal library. So you can access them at any time. If you forgot to get a freebie for our last webcast, that's always there for you. So you can go and download it again. Um, and it's just a really great benefit of joining us over there at sewingonline.sulky.com. All right, Diane, I'll see you there at 2 p.m. Lots of you already registered and looking forward to it. Me too. So I'm going to go get ready and make sure I have all my ducks in a row to join you in about an hour. Thanks for joining me today on So What? And be sure to tune in next week because we have another really great project that I'm going to share and hopefully you will get some inspiration to create something fantastic. All right, I will see you all next week and I'll see most of you in about an hour for our Scissor Stasher webcast. Again, thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.